kind of hot in these rhinos. Welcome into the Bro Four Squad podcast, where we're a bunch of bros just like you, drinking beer and talking movies. Jeff's out today. I'll be your host. I'm Matt Geiger, and this is episode 130. Before we get into it, let's bring in the other bro right beside me, Brian Banner, that you can't see but grew a Fu Man shoe and looks. Pretty much like if after Lieutenant Dan lost his leg and just decided the military wasn't for him. Banner, what made you decide to grow it? Are you just tired of sex or you want people to feel frightened by you? Surprisingly, sex sex hasn't gone down any. But when you don't have sex because you're married, it's kind of hard to go down from there. That's true. Uh, no, me and some buddies at work all decided that, fuck it, we're just going to grow some mustaches. So we did... And that was it. That's awesome. We got another two hours to fill. I guess we'll just do the episode since that's I your story. Yeah. So Sorry. if you listened to us before, or if you're new, it's time for the most important thing. It looks in pretty Indie fucking Bros. good, though. Yeah, it does. It looks fine. fine. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> it's time for the most important thing of any bro's life, chest day. If you read the description, you know what's happening. It's the Bro 4 Squad Court is in session and it's time to do another in defense of villains and this time scar from lion king is on the stand and before i throw it to banner for opening statements um just a little background if you haven't checked out our episode defending cow from titanic check that out it was about three episodes ago but basically we put a movie villain on trial and see if his or her actions are justified so scar lion king banner thrown into you for opening statements is Scar a murderer? Or is he just a mistreated younger brother who's just overbearing and won't get off his ass about anything? All Scar wants to do is, is include all of the creatures of the Pride Lands. Not <laughs> only the ones that he likes. He's friends with the hyenas. Mufasa doesn't want anything to do with the hyenas. Right? Scar's he's very, just trying he's to very liberal in his teachings, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he wants, he he's wants just everyone trying to, to unite everybody. Um, you just want me to unload everything here? We want to have a, a, a just discussion. a little opening statement. I mean, okay. just just a little appetizer. Don't all right. Well, don't just send out the steak yet. All right. Well, we'll just leave. We'll leave it right there with the dinner rolls and cinnamon butter. Okay, my opening statement. And since Jeff's out, I'm going to be judge and lawyer. And if you think that's just a little misguided and not fair, well, you know, fuck you. Get your own pod and you can do this. But this is how we're going to do it right now. We're shorthanded. Co- COVID season on the Bro 4 squad, too. But the show must yeah. go on. But Je- Jeff's doing fine, though. I think we're, he playing, just a... we're playing with the flu here. I mean, I think food he just poisoning. has a date Excuse with me. his fiance or something. I'm not sure what he's doing. Anywho, opening statement for Scar. It's probably like his five year anniversary or something. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to say. You know, as a lawyer with a heart, kind of like McConaughey uh, in The Lincoln Lawyer, the scene three or uh, the third act where he kind of gets a heart. It's going to be hard for me to look past murder. However, sometimes murder is justified, even if it's in front of a young cub and that happens to be his dad. Anyway, we'll get to that later. But Scar, by the way, do we know why we we call him Scar? Because Mufasa fucked him up. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he did it. Let's keep that in mind first. And when Scar actually gets in power, a lot of his, you know, methodologies actually it's definitely 180 of what Mufasa is doing. But as the defense will show later, all of this is just an opening statement. I believe it was justified and helped the entire Pride Lands as a whole, not just the Lions. So let's get right into it. First off, let's talk about Scar before he takes power. And Banner, I'll throw it to you in his past and, of course, the times leading up to the murder. As I said in my opening statement, Scar is extremely mistreated by his brother, Mufasa. Obviously, we know Mufasa hit him across the face, gave him this nasty, ugly scar. Granted, and Mufasa didn't know that chicks dug Scar, so Scar's getting all the fucking pussy He now. looks like Jason Momoa if he was a lion. So it God, kind of you're so right. That's... <laughs> insanely accurate (laughs) and Mufasa hit him for no reason sucker punched him out of nowhere that's rude um here's a here's a little known fact Sarabi Mufasa's wife guess who she was with before Mufasa and guess who 
used his king powers to make Sarabi his wife. That's right. Sarabi and Scar were in love. High school sweethearts, not yeah. class of <laughs> Africa, yeah. Africa high class of 78. <laughs> Scar was in band. You drew yeah, a line. Obviously. Muf- or, uh, Sarabi was the cheerleader. Unlikely pair. Mufasa was D end and tight end. He played yeah. both ways. He, he, obviously. You have to at a small school like that. What do you think? What do you think this is? Paris High? Pride, Pride, Walk, Pride Rock High School. PRHS representing. Right. Um, so, yeah, like I say, he's just super mistreated. Uh, Mufasa is always on his ass about everything. Honestly, Mufasa didn't teach Scar any leadership skills. Right? Right. So He was just the mean older brother. He was. He was a fucking bully. Let me talk about Pride Rock High a little bit. They could have went to state if uh, Rafiki wouldn't have tore his ACL and MCL um, at the first Travesty. game. Travesty. <laughs> that's, why, that's, why, that's why we'd have a stud quarterback. You don't use him to run the fucking option. You have him drop back. Like You spread him out. This is way before the uh, spread, though. So yeah. you kind of had they to do what know you it. They invented the spread. So Banner touched on it a little bit. I'll take the baton from there. We talked about Scar. But Scar, he's next in line to be king. Wrap your head around that. Put your put yourself in Scar's paws, if you will. Pun. And this little fucking hair nugget named Simba comes totally... You don't even know anything, any of his policies at all. He's just born. He's like, yeah, he's going to be fucking king. What the fuck is that? I mean, there's no... There's no vote. Let's let's see who has the best policy. Scar's definitely more ready than Simba. He's been behind Mufasa, seeing everything Mufasa's done right, and also he's done wrong that he can change. Simba's born, and basically, what is Scar's place? He's just out. He's just the uncle. What is he going to be it's Prince on Harry. The, the lion board to, to help him? Like, what the fuck's he going to do? So then he decides, which is the only thing I really can't defend, he takes it into his own hands, that how does he become king? Well, you just kind of got to get rid. You got to got to kind of JFK the king in front of you, pretty much. Did he kill him? Or uh, did he just want to try and scare him a little? By throwing him off a cliff? I mean, you could... Uh, did he throw him off a cliff or did he slip? Was Mufasa's paws sweaty? Maybe. Why he may have s- tried to help him up. Right. He was. Let me let me consult my notes here for a second. So keep going. I mean, I, I Scar, hate to say we weren't there, but we all were in '94 in the theater, so we actually saw everything that happened. Yeah. But maybe we miss miss saw it. Scar did try to save Mufasa. Okay, he dug his claws in there, right? We know we did. Mufasa's paws were sweaty. We even have the statement by Scar: "Long live the king." Long live the king. Does that sound like somebody that wants to kill the king? No, he wants the king to live. He just said it. I mean, I think he was talking about himself. That he was. Why always... would he want to kill his only blood relative? To take the throne? <laughs> I'm just thinking about what I'd do, I guess. I don't know. Maybe not everyone's as sick as me. I don't know. I've I'm got... saying it, 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 it works out, however... As we've seen with um, stuff going overseas and stuff, sometimes your worst enemy, if you keep them closer and make them allies, sometimes they're a little better. And I do like what Scar did with the hyenas. They're misunderstood. They're misunderstood. He, he, you know, Mufasa built a wall around the elephant graveyard and fucking Scar tore it down and let the hyenas live in there. And they all live in prosperity. But let's take about, okay, the two blemishes on Scar's record, Banner, is definitely him killing or. Allegedly, Mufasa. I don't know. Allegedly killing him, and then the other one is them running basically out of food and him starving the Pride Lands. But the thing is, was the Pride Lands really starved, or was there basically never enough food to go around, and only the high up was eating, and the lower were always starved? See, that's what I'm saying. the The economic situation that Mufasa left Scar in after his untimely passing, nobody's going to be successful in that. Right? Nobody. Uh, 
Look, did Scar make some mistakes as, as ruler? Sure. <laughs> sure. They all do. Okay. <laughs> but let's think about it. You want me to admit that he Simba, bleeds? Sure, I'll do that. Yeah. We all bleed. Simba ran out on his girlfriend, ran out on his family, and he ran out on the kingdom. That left Scar. Now this kingdom is in disarray. They just lost their king. They just lost their prince, future king, who, might I add, was probably going to be pretty successful. Mm -hmm. And now they've got Scar, who's just been thrown to the wayside. He's a bum off the street trying to do his best. And not to um, basically shine a light off the person that we're talking about here and basically shine on someone else to make them look bad, but hey, it's election season, and that's just kind of what people do. But what was so bad about Scar is people say, well, he killed the king to take power. Well, what did Simba do? It's exactly what Simba did. He That's came what back. I'm saying. Look, Simba is a, mur a murderer as well, or an attempted murderer. Okay, real villain here is Simba. Ran out on his family, ran out on the kingdom, left them in disarray. Okay, then he attempted to murder Scar for trying to get revenge because he thinks Scar killed Mufasa. And then at the end, obviously, the hyenas turned on him because of Simba saying, hey, look, this isn't my fault. I, I'm here. I didn't run out. I'm here. This is his fault. I'm saying that Scar is only a villain if you're a lion. I think everyone else likes Scar because, like, okay, now we can eat. It's only for the lion. Zebras might have their issues on some certain topics. Yeah. Well, this is the 90s. We don't care what the zebras think. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, are we? Do you have any other points? Are you ready to reach a verdict on this? Let's let's look at the people as a ruler, who Scar surrounds himself with. Okay, he takes leaders, leaders, from other factions, from the hyenas, and he tries to unite everybody. Simba's inner circle is his girlfriend slash wife, where she's just going to tell him whatever he wants to hear. So, surrounded by a bunch of yes men. You're married, you know that's not true, but keep going. Then, <laughs> then I'm trying to make a fucking point here, okay, guys. So, okay. We'll edit that out. <laughs> then, he is also, his number one and number two, two clowns that got kicked out of their, out of their little group and tribe in Timon and Pumbaa. You just got a bunch of outcasts. Instead of going out and getting the leaders to unite as one front, to save the Pride Lands. It's not Scar's fault that the Pride Lands had a drought as soon as his reign started. He didn't plan for that. You, you can't control Mother Nature. The other thing I'll say is the lions seemed a little over the top that there was no food. So you're telling me that there was abundance of food until hyenas came in that don't really eat that much. They're smaller than most dogs. And now you're saying that there's a food drought because they're eating everything in sight. It's not like the, it's not like he had a herd of elephants come in and invade the Pride Lands. It makes no fucking sense. Look, I'll just leave you guys with this, okay? A lot of people are like, well, he didn't help Simba at all. Scar gave Simba a choice. Simba's the king now. Mufasa was dead. That's clear. Simba's the king. He needs to make these tough decisions. Scar, being next in line, being a great advisor to the king now simply gave him a choice leave never come back betray your family and your country but you can't come back don't ever return because that's that's fucked up you just ran out on everybody that's just scar being a good leader leader he's he's helping people make tough decisions all right well we i think we've reached a verdict so what what do you have and it's, it's not and a it's stance it stands. There's no... This isn't a fucking democracy. What we say goes. Obviously. I think he's... I don't think it's murder. I think it's manslaughter. I think he gets out on time served. Um, maybe maybe six months probation? Okay. Um, I'm not going to call him a villain. Um, and here's why. He murdered Mufasa. And I've, I, that I'll go to my grave believing that. But the other thing is Mufasa was telling Simba a couple scenes before how it's okay to, mil 
to murder wildebeest and eat them because we need their food. So basically one murder's okay and the other's not. At the end of the day, these are not people. They're fucking lions. It's survival of the fittest. And if you're king, you better watch your fucking back because someone else probably wants to take your spot. That's in life, too. If you're like an employee, you better watch below you because someone wants to take your spot. It's the way it is. People got to eat. I'm fine with it. If Scar's a villain, so is Mufasa, so is Simba. So I'm going to say... He's not, and if you're saying that he is, then you're going to have to admit that so is Mufasa and so is Simba. See, wasn't that hard. So Scar's free to go. He can go. Yeah, yeah. I bet he's going to do some lines tonight, buy some hookers, and party yep. in Vegas. Yep. <laughs> you bet. And tomorrow he's going to file the civil suit against the Pride Lands. God, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that on court TV. All right, our next segment is called our protein shake, which is a fancy little way of saying what have we been watching. So, Banner, how many things you got this week? One, two, three, four, five, six. They'll go. They'll go fairly quick. Yeah, you go ahead. I got three or four. All right. Uh, watched Up the other night. Dare I say it? It's a top three Pixar movie. Probably a top five animated movie. Maybe even a top twenty movie all time. Didn't we do a Pixar tournament? Uh, Was that us? Yeah, yeah, we did that. I, I don't so. know where it's. I don't know. I don't remember where it, where it ended. But yeah, fuck if you man, guys really are interested, I'm sure you can search for it in our yeah roforsquad.com. Yeah, <laughs> we're not gonna uh, tell you how to get it. You can look if you want. The just the whole idea and the levity of having your soulmate die and being afraid to take that next step and have a new adventure um by yourself without that person with you is just a really really crazy powerful message to send out in a kids movie and to have it work and kids love it i mean it's all the balloons the colors the adventure it's just a good fucking movie great characters but at the heart of it it's about taking that next step about not being afraid to to take a risk and that's that's ultimately what uh what carl had to do in this movie it's a great movie if you haven't seen it revisit it It it's a pretty good movie yeah (laughs) has a lot of heart to it yeah for a pixar movie i'll say um all right so all the hype was around schitt's creek at the recent emmys so me and the wife decided we're gonna start it we watched the first season guys I, i get it it's pretty fucking funny Pretty fucking Eugene good. Levy uh, yep. is um, God his damn son, it, Chris, him and his Chris son Elliot in that, huh? Or or Elliot? What the hell is his last? Uh, the guy that was in, he's in um, Everyone Loves Raymond. He was Robert's girlfriend's brother. Maybe. I don't know. If, I thought he was in it too. I thought he was like the fuck up son or whatever. We all know I'm not the guy that knows people's like names. As cast Looking members. The cast. All right. You look at it. I've up. heard good things about it, though. Yeah, it's really good. Geiger, I think you'll love it. Um, it's really funny. Just the idea of having this extremely rich family. Yeah, Chris Elliott. Now, Elliot. uh, super poor. Rolling shits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's really funny in it. He's the mayor of the He's town. He's hilarious and everything. Yeah. Uh, but just having this rich family own a town, which I didn't even know you could do, but apparently it's a thing. Uh, and that's the only thing they have to their name and them having to live in this backwoods country when they're used to living in London and New York and Paris. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious. Office good. Um, I don't think I'm the right person to ask for that because I'm not the biggest office fan. I like it, but I don't think it's over the top. Fantastic. Great. You like Parks and Rec? I do like Parks and Rec. Is Parks and Rec good? Mm, Nah. I don't. You gotta compare it to Parks and Rec season one, though. That's it. Yeah, just season one. I would say it's probably better than season one of Parks and Rec. But obviously, as a whole, because I haven't finished Shit's Creek, I can't determine that as an entire series at this point in time. I'll get back to you guys. Uh, (laughs) go ahead. What? I said, please do, because I actually might start that show. I didn't watch. I mean, I'm not watching award shows because I, I didn't even know that there was anything out. Like what? What else was? So you watched the Emmys? I didn't watch it. I just, oh, I thought you did. 
No, I didn't watch it. You just said I don't watch up. it even when it's a normal year. Okay, you just said it cleaned up at the Emmys. Oh, yeah, it won like seven Emmys okay. or something like that. I just saw like a... You know. Award shows, but right now I'm just like, man, I didn't even know there's anything on to award people with, I guess. Yeah. I mean, pretty much if you're on, you get you win. Yeah. Cool. Um, Baby Banner wanted to watch Spider-Man the other day. So we watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This might be one of the best soundtracks of all movies. It's a, like Childish Gambino in it. Uh, it's got um, the fuck is this? Kendrick Lamar is in it. Oh, okay, yeah, it's Ken- yeah. yeah. Who also did uh, Black Panther? Black Panther. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The uh, same year too, I believe, 2018. Huh. Yeah. Nice. Oh, but just a good, a great movie because it. I think I like it so much. I think why it resonates and why people like it is it's not the same story. It's Miles Morales' story, not Peter Parker's story. And that's so fresh. We haven't seen Uncle Ben, or we've seen Uncle Ben die. We don't need to see that again. We're ready. I was ready for a new Spider-Man, and we got it, and it's great. Uh, Geiger, I watched Phantom Menace. It's fucking great. It's, it's a great pizza movie. It's, it's what I had. Pizza <laughs> and beer, it was a fucking blast. It's just... Get a medium two topping and a six pack. It's a great. Like night. You don't watch like, like Lincoln Lawyer or Shawshank and eat a pizza, but you no. do watch Phantom Menace and eat a pizza and drink, you know, drink some beers. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And the nice thing is, is when they're talking about the Senate and all the like the political stuff that's going on in the movie, perfect time to go pee. Yeah. Actually, a lot of that stuff I find interesting because as a kid, I'm like, I don't get any of this. I don't care. I just want to see lightsaber fights. But now it's like a different level to the movie that I really never realized how Star Wars was so not like political, like, you know, about American politics, just like it was power. But it was power that we're used to about it's it's not just an army going and killing somebody. It's all done in the Senate through senators and Congress and stuff. It's very it's very interesting now that I'm older and kind of understand that stuff. Yeah, I I agree. And now that the universe is growing um, with Rebels and then you see everything that they did with the Clone Wars and Mandalorian now, the universe is growing and it all hinges and it all um, grows off of that seed of Phantom Menace. Whether you think we needed it or not, we have it. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. That's still one of the greatest stories ever. How basically the Emperor didn't come into power by just killing a bunch of people and using his powers. He did. He did it by just being a Jordan Belfort manipulator. Basically. It's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and then last thing, Geiger, you'll appreciate this. Uh, actually two things. Um, away Netflix show, Hillary Swank. Okay. Really good. Um, she is the captain of the first crew to, fly to mars and start a small colony on mars um she's gonna be there three years and then she's coming back that's that's the story and it's about them getting there really good um just great acting great writing the it's interesting how they are handling family members being in space and being gone for that long and then obviously you have all the drama of you know what if this happens? What if that happens? This breaks, that breaks. Um, there's a little bit of teenage uh, coming of age in it and, and learning how to grow up at, through your teenage years. It's a pretty good, pretty good show. I think, I think Horns would like it a lot more than you, Geiger, but I think you would think it's fine. A lot of, uh, a lot of space movies coming out, it seems like. Or uh, the Disney Plus, I saw, has a TV show about it's the right stuff. Yeah. Which used to be, which was a movie, right? Now they're just making a TV show. I think so. Yeah. Space is it all right. Sounds right. I can get. Yeah. I can. You know, I can pop a boner for space. That's cool. Yeah. Whatever. It's it's cool how they take the technology that we have now and advance it just enough to where you're like, you know what? This is believable. I actually think we could put a team on Mars, and kind of the thought process that goes out and how it plays out of them. Um, getting supplies to Mars and getting the people to Mars and dealing with all of the foreseen and unforeseen uh, issues and problems that arise on such an endeavor. I'd like to get really stoned and just pretend like we have life forms on Mars and like Mars gets an NFL team 
I'm like, so you're saying the Raiders have to p- go to Kansas City, then go to Mars and play on a short week? I'm like, wow, fuck you, NFL. Player safety. Well, well Mar- <laughs> the Martians <laughs> have to play at home, then in London, then the West Coast. Yeah, then Mars would home? have to go- travel to London. Like, we still want the London fans, too. Yeah, obviously. It's, joke. it's a big hit over there. Um, and then last thing, Geiger, because you have shit on me for just not liking music and not be getting into it. I have made a conscious effort to get into it. Okay. Started listening to the Wu-Tang Clan a little bit. Yeah, Wu-Tang's good. Yeah. There is a, on Hulu, a, uh, like biopic series on the Wu-Tang Clan. It's called Wu-Tang and American Saga. And it's basically how the Wu-Tang Clan got together um, and what they were doing, you know, peddling drugs and in this giant drug war while they were uh, becoming the Wu-Tang Clan and how RZA put them all together. See, I think how, that's how we're going to get you into music is you got to watch like music, not like Bohemian Rhapsody, but like real documentaries about the bands. Oh, for sure, man. Because as a score guy, it baffles me that you don't like love like. I mean, even, you know, Eddie Van Halen just died, how he, like, composed all his music. Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, how they don't necessarily write the lyrics, but they write all the drums and everything behind it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I think I just like watching movies so much more that that's how I was able to appreciate the art of music. And it's nothing against, like, musicians. Like, after watching this Wu-Tang Clan thing, I watch one episode the next day, I just put my uh, put my uh, phone on Wu Tang Clan and I listened to damn near every song that they had. It was great. See, see man, I I love. I mean, when when it's Christmas season, I'll put in my headphones and go putt on a golf course and listen to like Frank Sinatra Christmas or Elvis Christmas. Like I fucking I love music, all types of music too. Pussy for the rest of us. Damn right. That's all I got. All right, I I got a I got it. Four things, but they're all totally fucking different. Very interesting. So first, I I tried to do this for the pod. I really did, but I shut off halfway. And the new Netflix Halloween, Adam Sandler, Hubie Halloween. This, I just can't do it, guys. I can't fucking do it. And I'm going to tell you, and Banner, I think you say this sometimes, and I want to put you to the task that you're an Adam Sandler fan, and I will call most of you liars. I think you are a fan of Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison and big daddy but other than that i don't think you're an adam sandler fan because the shit he's throwing out is no. terrible. uh the only other one i was pleasantly surprised he did one with i believe it was jennifer aniston not too long ago uh netflix original murder mystery oh banner i'm glad you brought that up Ooh, okay good because this movie and i fell for that murder mystery trap too i watched it and the only reason you think it was good is because you it kept you intrigued because you want to know who did it. It wasn't funny. It wasn't clever by any means. And they did the same thing in this movie. However, Geiger did not fall for the fucking trap. I turned it off because Sandler's like, listen, everyone gets my stick. I have the alumni come, all the goofy bastards that can't get real acting roles I do, with their in my movies. The voices. Okay, this this voice he does makes fucking Bobby Boucher. You can compare him to Rain Man now compared to this fucking shit because Adam Sandler can't do voices. It just sounds like Adam Sandler doing voices. Do you know what I mean by that? Like when Robin Williams does a voice, you don't know who the fuck it is. Yeah. But Adam Sandler's like, that's Adam Sandler doing a stupid voice. It's kind of like me. Anytime I try and do any voice, I just sound Jamaican. It's yeah, it's it's like. It's not like when Jeff does Michael Caine, you're like, oh, that's somebody doing Michael Caine. Yeah. But when one of us does a voice, you're like, oh, that's Geiger trying to do somebody else. Like, it, you can tell, like... For sure. It, we're not good at it, and he's not either. Anywho, so this Halloween is basically like, he's a the town dumbass, and everyone makes fun of him, and then it has a kind of hidden agenda why you shouldn't bully people and everything like that. A bunch of fart shit, piss jokes, got Rob Schneider. Everyone's in it. You know, it's it's like the fucking buffet at a Chinese restaurant. Like, you can't find the egg rolls. Just wait. It'll be down the row. <laughs> and after a while, I'm like, dude, this is what he's doing. He's doing the same stupid ass stick, but now he's throwing, like, mysteries in it. And this is like a mystery of this person gets out of the same asylum and he says every Halloween he's going to protect the town, but this time he actually realized people were going missing and you're trying to find out who did it. 
You want to ask me who did it? I don't fucking know because I'm not staying around because it's not a good enough movie to find out who did it. This isn't like Fracture or like, you know, fucking, I don't know, some other thriller like a Get Out or something that you want to fucking see the ending. This is absolutely fucking terrible. And the thing is, and after Uncut Gems, which seems like 80 years ago, not only because I watched this movie for 30 minutes, but also because of the pandemic that happened this year, is I don't blame, like, we shit on the Oscars a lot. Of course, and well deserved, may I add. But as we should, having Adam Sandler there, I don't blame him. They're like, dude, you're just gonna make a mockery of this. Say, see, any idiot can get um, up for best actor and then go do stupid shit. Like some of these people, as much as we shit on them, do develop their craft to become serious actors, and it is a lot of work. I, I will give them that. Now, I don't really care how you vote or tell me about pollution, or I don't care about any of that. But Sandler basically just shits on acting all the time. I'm going to call my buddies. We're going to put on stupid wigs, do fart jokes, and do stupid voices. And then he's going to try to act. And Uncut Gems, great fucking movie. It was good. It was really good. It was good. I really liked it. However, I I could name probably five actors off the top of my head. If you put them in Sandler's position, probably would have done as good or probably better job than him. Anyway, Pacino Pacino would have killed that role. I don't think he was that good, personally. I, I mean, I will say it just like I hated Adam Sandler in that, but the people around him were actually funny and had good stories that it made it a watchable movie for me. Yeah, I'll agree with that statement. The, the only thing that he really outshined in Big Daddy's another one. I didn't think he was really that funny in it. I think a lot of the other people around him were funny. Uh, Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore were the two that I'm like, he makes these movies. A hundred percent. So I watched that. Don't watch it unless you just are high. But usually if you're high, you're coming up with like who killed JFK and some weird ass conspiracy and it's an alien somehow. Like you want stuff yeah, that I mean, balances your brain. That's like a slow Tuesday. All right. Next stayed on Netflix. Haven't seen this for fucking ever. I had this DVD when I was like in seventh grade. My wife has never seen it. And she's like, it was almost too stupid for me, but I fucking loved it. And that's not another teen movie. Oh, this my movie. God. I love not another. Team. I if you if I probably you haven't Geiger, seen it in 15 years. Oh, it's on Netflix and oh it's on God. Hulu because I was looking at Hulu and they're like, you might like this. I'm like, man, Hulu, you know me because I just watched it an hour ago. Fucking social limb is all fucking true. Anywho. So <laughs> this this is right up my alley. I love airplane, love naked gun, love basketball, any of those type of fucking movies. I fucking dig if they if they're actually space balls, probably the king of them. This is a fantastic joke movie. It hits everyone. My wife keeps pulling up. Oh, that's from She's All That. Oh, that's from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And Chris Evans, lest we forget, this is how I like my Chris Evans, man. This is how he started. And Jamie Presley's in it, and she's fantastic in it. And uh, I don't know the guy's name, but I got to mention him since Jeff's in the pod. But Ted Mosley from How I Met Your Mother's in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know his name either. But I forgot he was in it. And, uh, I mean, this is probably more of a thing for Jeff, but I forgot... When they're at prom, Good Charlotte is the prom band. And this was like right before they hit it really big. Yeah. And they did a really good job. Jeff's somewhere with a Good Charlotte boner on right now. Yeah. They're a good band. I don't care. Whatever. They're Rock fine. Good Charlotte. Great guess. movie, though. Watch it. It's on Netflix. And I, I'm pretty sure I saw it on Hulu, too. Next, I watched The Bachelorette. I'll keep this short since Jeff's not on. We'll be doing Bachelorette for unless you watched it. Uh, I did not watch it. It's on my list to watch, but uh, I had to get. I had to watch Big Brother. Um, okay. I'm invested. I'm invested too far in that. But Big Brother's three times a week. Bachelorette's only one time a week. So I will easily get caught up and stay caught up. I'll um I'll just go it over really quick since it's uh better when we got me and Jeff. We both watch it together. But yeah, we got Claire. She's 39. Um, oldest bachelorette in history. Uh, however, we still got guys who are like 27, 28, 29. The oldest guy I was watching is 40, which makes no sense. This would be a perfect time for a 45 year, five year old guy to be on the bachelor dating a 39 year old. Yeah. You think a 27 year old wants to win or wants to get married? I mean, which, which one do you think he wants to do? Honestly, he probably just wants to get laid. However, the best thing that happened, one was the big first reveal was, does Claire have coronavirus? Because if she does, she can't uh, go on. And oh. instead of <laughs> instead of her going to the doctor, waiting all the results, she had to go home. And they kept cutting 
to like her in the living room and one she's looking out the window, one she's on the couch, one she's on her phone texting, like basically like waiting forever. And Chris Harrison comes and gives her the results. I have not been tested for COVID, but if I do, I want Chris Harrison to come give me the results and tell me yay or nay. Other than that, I will never get tested for coronavirus. How about that? That's the deal I'm making with America. Look, he spits words of wisdom at the end of every show. I'm a Chris Harrison backer. Yeah, if, for sure. I always tell my wife, if there's one person I'm jealous of in this world, it's Chris fucking Harrison. One, Him or uh, Jeff Probst from Survivor. Yes. But Chris Harrison, though, you know on The Bachelor he gets the scraps. Then also he gets to go to these great places. He's only on set for like fucking 30 minutes a day. You know how much golf? Uh, me and Thurman would kill that job. You know how much golf he probably plays? Just goes to the gym in the morning, plays 18. He's like, oh, yeah, I got to be on here and deal with these stupid ass chicks for a while. Then act like I care. Fucking great gig. I could do that. For I sure. miss my calling. though. Anyway, the second one, I hope everyone watches this because you'll be delighted to know that this was filmed during basically the hotbed of COVID. Like I would say late February, early March to a couple months ago. And you'll be happy to know that when you were sheltering in place, probably losing your job, not being able to pay your rent or mortgage, that these people got tested for COVID once and was put in a resort in California, which is the most locked down state there was besides maybe New York. And basically after they were tested once banner, you're good. You can just hug, kiss, touch, do whatever you want for the rest of the time. Yeah. You're in a bubble, but I understand that the people that were tested were in a bubble, but you do know that someone has to cook and bring, you know, there's like probably 120 people going on and off set all the time. Nah, I know this is the first episode. I'm just saying that if someone doesn't get quarantined and stuff, I'm calling fucking bullshit because every fucking sport's been going on and there has been a ton of fucking outbreaks. And you're saying the bachelor, no one has one. Either any of that, I'll leave it alone for Jeff. Um, there's some, of course, drama that happens. This chick, I like her, though. She sniffed it out from the first. There was a drama that happened. She got rid of the guy. I'm for Claire right now, except there's a big thing. I think she leaves halfway through because she finds love somewhere else I've been reading. So yeah. stay tuned for that. Yeah, I've uh, I've heard that she may not be the only Bachelor at this year. I know. So that's I'm excited for that. Last thing Our- I'll talk about. Do we have like the typical douchebag guys that we normally get? There's this one guy that whenever he came in, I told my wife, I'm like, he's going to win. And he was from West Virginia and he had a McConaughey draw. And actually one guy called him mini McConaughey, which is cool. But he actually got kicked out because he was bringing up that he knew a guy somehow that was from New Jersey that was talking to some chick that he kind of knew from Morgantown, West Virginia, and he's not here for the right reasons or some fucking shit. But one guy honestly pulls up in a Bentley, has a wife's white scarf, looks like a James Bond villain. His name's Barrett. He's one of my favorites too. And do we have, is he, is he potential bachelor material? I don't think so. I think this guy is too like a, a cartoon character. To yeah. believe. Bachelors are usually just kind of frumpy douchebags, but there was one guy that walked out and she said, Oh my God, that's my future husband. Didn't say a word to him or anything like that. I said, maybe this is why you're single in 39. Yeah. That's a good, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like every guy like looks at a chick that's red hot and is like, Oh my God, that's my future wife. Then you meet her and she's like a complete bitch or a slut or something, or she doesn't like you. One of the two. Yeah. Simple as that. All right, last thing I watch, and I, I can't wait to talk to you about this because I haven't seen this movie in fucking years either. And I was about to go to bed, and I was flipping through. Um, I'm living in a new place, so the cable package is new, and it's fucking, I think it's Ion, which is some TV channel. And Smoke and Aces was on, and I haven't seen this movie for fucking ever. I think I've only seen it once. Uh, best cast probably in movie history. I, I, <laughs> uh, Ryan Reynolds, Jeremy Piven, Ray Liotta, Ben Affleck, Andy Garcia... Tommy Flanagan from Sons of Anarchy, Alicia Keys, Jason Bateman, Common, Peter Berg's in it, Chris Pine is in it. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. When, this, when, when did this come Matthew out? Matthew Fox like is in it. It came out in 2006. 2006. So this is like early in a lot of those people's... Uh, Chris Pine was nobody. Yeah, Ryan that, Reynolds was kind of getting to be a serious actor. Like yeah, he just, I mean, like, he had Van Wilder Bantle. and yeah. like waiting before that. This is a fantastic crime movie with a huge twist at the end and something that even me who's seen it a couple times back in my youth 
had to pause it and rewind it because I'm like, oh, yeah, that guy's that and that's connects there. And I forgot about that. And then the third act, man, fucking just to shoot him up. You got a bunch of these bounty hunters going after Jeremy Piven, who's basically like what to call it, like a Chris Angel mind freak in Vegas is basically who he is. And he's connected to the mob and he's given up people. So all these there's a huge bounty on his head and all these fucking hitmen are going after him. They're trying to be the first ones there and then they kill each other. And it is fantastically done. The cops are trying to get there. Who is um, uh, Leota and Ryan Reynolds before all the hitmen get there. And it takes place too, which is awesome in um, Lake Tahoe, the whole, the whole movie. So very good movie. If you haven't seen it, is the timeline in that like over the course of like a week, I would say uh, three or four days. I mean, it, it goes back to when Piven was in Vegas and kind of tells like flashback scenes. Uh, okay. I'd say maybe That's three right. or four. It's coming days, back yeah. to me. It's coming back to me. It's very fucking good. All right. Other than that, <laughs> yes, got a little banner. bit of a sore throat today. Sorry. <laughs> even lift, bro. So that leads us to our last segment. Do you even lift, bro? Which is a question and answer segment where we scour the internet. Four questions, and then we do our best to answer them. This comes from Twitter, Jessica Morgan at Jessica, capital J Morgan, capital M underscore at Jessica Morgan underscore. If you had a time machine, what moment would you relive? Very good question. And it's got a picture of, of course, the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Check out our movie commentary on that. So I'll throw it to Banner. I mean, I don't think I would go back to any moment in my own life. I'm very happy with all the big moments in my life, how they went. I, I don't want to relive them because they were great in that moment, and I don't want to tarnish that, thinking about how it could be different. But I would probably, honestly, that the dream team, that famous practice, I might go and sit in the stands and watch that. Mm. I think that would be a great game to watch all right yeah so mine would be one of my own life and people are probably thinking it's like something huge like my wedding or something like that actually i'm a simple fucking person and this is what i'd relive so i can tell you the day i can even tell you the year i know it happened um early summer but i played golf very early with nate thurman who also is on the bro for squad podcast and we played this pretty tough course and we both shot a really fucking good score. Um, we both, I think it, one was shot 75, one was shot 74. And then after that, I had a couple, um, I came home. My wife was like, what do you want to do? I was like, I had a really good day at the fun course. Let's go by the pool and just fucking drink and listen to tunes. So then we floated all day by the pool, drank, listened to tunes, just enjoyed each other company. Then that night I was really drunk and I can't remember who was on, but I think I texted you or Jeff and one of you came on and then we did a movie commentary. And then later that night, like I ate pizza and talked to my wife and we drank some more. And that is a perfect fucking day. I played well at golf. I'm by the pool. I catch a fucking tan. I'm drinking Modelo's. I get on. I did everything I love that day. I hung out with my wife. I love the pool. I love golfing with my friends. I love potting. And I got it all done in a fucking day on a weekend. It's the dream. I would live. I would relive that day. Every, and it's not like, oh, man, something miraculously happened. Like, you could do that day. I mean, you, you don't always shoot the best score. It's not always sunny. Your bros don't always want to pod. But all of it just fucking happened. I remember I was really drunk, and I told my wife, I was like, this is the best day of my life. And then she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, just everything. It was just chill. Like, you know, it's not like I went to Europe or anything. Like, everything happened just around. But if you enjoy the stuff around you, man, you don't need that much. Take yeah. that as a life lesson. Yeah. That's a great, uh, very great question from Jessica Morgan. She's also pretty famous. She has a lot of Twitter followers. Hey, there you go. Maybe we can have her on. I don't know. All right. Well, we've been the Broforce Squad. That's episode 130. We've done that 130 fucking times. Jesus Christ. Remember when we used to not, you know, have to get all shot up and taped up to do it? We're getting old. I know. Check out. All of our content, website, broforsquad.com. Sometimes I just have to do a line of blow to get myself amped. I mean, we did that episode one, though. <laughs> but yeah. well, You didn't say what episode that I did that. It's true. I can't believe I've done it 130 times. 
you're probably listening to us on YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Whatever you do, do us a favor, like us, subscribe to us. This makes our channel grow. Um, we really appreciate it. And Letterbox is where you can get a bunch of our reviews and stuff like that. Bro4Squad.com also will do some squad blogs for you. And Twitter, at Bro4Squad. Tweet at us questions. Tweet at us what you want us to do next. Comment below what you want us to do next. Tell us if we suck or if we're good or if we need to just eat shit and kill ourselves. Adam Sandler pun. Well, that escalated quickly. Until then, I'm Geiger. He's Banner. We'll see you next time. Dude, my mustache does look awesome.